this video is for all of you individuals who say, just change your diet to avoid getting cancer. This is for you because somebody like me, I can't just change my diet to avoid getting cancer when I'm born with a mutated gene. I'm BRCA1 positive and it's something that I've been dealing with for the last five months, to be honest with you. Take me on a trip, I like to go someday. Take me so my name is Brie Henderson and if you are new to my channel, welcome. Normally when I make content, I usually try to make content that is educational or extremely useful for anybody out there who may be going through something that I'm going through or just somebody who wants to learn about something that they are interested in. Um, this topic is gonna be a little bit more personal. I think all my topics are pretty personal, but this one was a bit much. I didn't have any intentions on ever making content for this particular topic, but because I got so much feedback and questions and all kinds of things from you guys through Instagram, those of you who follow me on Instagram, um, know that I am about to share a very personal journey by request. Like this was something that a lot of ladies were like, go, I didn't know that you were going through this, I have a similar, similar family history, and I kinda wanna know more information about how you got started and how did you find out about your diagnosis? Like, what are the steps that you did to, to get to this point? So, on February 28th, I was diagnosed uh, with BRCA1, being BRCA1 positive, and BRCA1 is a gene mutation. It makes me high risk for breast cancer and ovarian cancer, and the thing about this, it is hereditary. It's not something I can change. You can't be like, girl, eat some of this alkaline diet, you're gonna be good to go. No, none of that works. Um, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's in my DNA and it's, it's something I can't change. What I can do is um, take preventative care um, and get ahead of this before I end up with this cancer. Now, how do I know that I'm going to have um, a chance of ending up with some type of breast cancer or ovarian cancer. And that is because um, I have a long family history of breast cancer. For instance, my mother had breast cancer twice. So in the last past 15 years, she dealt with it twice before having a double mastectomy, so she never has to deal with it again. She also had a first cousin who had breast cancer as well. And unfortunately, um, she ended up passing, which I found out probably a month ago that um, it was from ovarian cancer, which made this even more so real for me. In addition to that, they both, um, then this is on the paternal side, their fathers were brothers. And from my understanding, their father and mother had breast cancer and died from it when my grandfather was roughly like eight years old. He was very young when she passed. Um, and then obviously um, my grandfather's, and I'm not mistaken, my grandfather's sisters, some of his sisters, also had some type of breast cancer or very cancer. So I always knew that um, eventually uh, there would come a time that I may have to deal with cancer in regards to myself. And back then I was okay with it because I didn't have children. Now that I have kids, I'm not okay with it. I don't wanna deal with it. I don't wanna have to go through chemo, radiation, and I just kinda wanna cut off the toxic parts of my body. Does that make sense? I know that can be a bit much for people because they're like, oh girl, I don't want to do that. I'm okay with that. I'm willing to chop off a leg if it means to save the, the body. And maybe that's because I'm a mom. My life has drastically changed. My mindset has drastically changed since um, giving birth to three children. And so you look at life and things differently than you would have um, when you were single, which makes sense, right? I don't have all the answers, but I think I have enough that can get you started on your own separate journey um, as you are following this journey. So, um, back in November of 2021, I went to my OBGYN, and this is why it's extremely, extremely important for individuals to be open and honest with their physicians in regard to their health and their family health. I've always talked to all my OBGYNs about um, my breast cancer, um, my family history of breast cancer. Not me, knock on wood. Um, my OBGYN that took care of me since I was 22, 23, all the way up until I was 29, before I moved to a different state, um, knew my mom's history of breast cancer. She was very 
open or where I was very open to her about that she knew um, she knew when my mom was diagnosed with it again and she's always recommended for me to have this testing done I ended up having two of my kids that she delivered and I was pregnant with the third one um, that she could have delivered but we ended up moving to a new state I ended up finding a temporary OBGYN who was willing to um, deliver my baby for me okay she's temporary mentally physically whatever very temporary I'm trying to say this in the nicest way possible because I didn't really want to deal with this lady afterwards. <laughs> so, um, talked around, find, found an OBGYN from my home state who um, works here in Florida, and I finally got a chance to see her. It took a while to get that appointment, but I finally got in, which was of November of 2021. Went in, we had a quick discussion. Boom, boom, boom. Gave her my family history, gave her my history, and when we started talking about breast cancer, I told her about my mom. Okay, and then I told her about um, my paternal side, how um, my biological father had leukemia, and she was like, whoa, this is a lot of cancer in your family. Um, even though leukemia is not a hereditary cancer, she was concerned about the breast cancer and immediately said, um, are you done with having kids? And I told her, I'm definitely done with having kids. We are set, me and my husband, we're happy with our three. There's no more coming. She said, I want to go ahead and um, send me over to get this genetic testing done. She filled out this little form. She told me that this, these people were gonna call me. They called me the following week. They set up my testing to be done um, in January, the beginning of January, and I went in and got my blood work done. I walk into the center. I sit down, they take blood. We talk, uh, me and the, the RN and I talk about, you know, the family history. They want to get a whole little background on what they're doing. She lets me know that they're not just testing me for the breast cancer, um, the BRCA1 or BRCA2 gene. They're going to test me for a variety of hereditary cancers. This is just what they do. Um, and then she tells me that my insurance would cover it because of the fact that I come from, um, I have a long line of, uh, cancer in my family, specifically breast cancer. So I'm like, okay, great, perfect. I don't have to pay out of pocket. This is awesome, blase, blase. She says in about a month, they are going to call me to come back in and we're gonna talk about my results. So during this time frame, when I was left there, I knew or I felt in my heart that I was gonna be negative. Um, and then a bunch of things started occurring in my life. My grandmother lost her sister. That sister lost, um, who, who passed, ended up having two sons died. Um, we found out that my father-in-law had terminal cancer. We found out that my grandfather had terminal cancer. We were finding out a whole bunch of BS. I almost cursed, excuse my language. Uh, we found out a whole bunch of sugar honey iced tea um, in the months of January to February when all of this was taking place. Even when people were dying um, and people were on their way to die. It, it was hard to just accept all of this was occurring in our lives. Um, not to say, not, not to forget that um, the years prior, 2020, 2021, we lost so many close relatives. Um, so a lot of things were happening. And so February 8th rolls around and I get a call that um, they need to push my, my results back. Me coming in to talk to them about my results. So I'm like, this is not good. <laughs> it's not good. Um, so I was like, is everything okay? She says, your results aren't ready just yet. We just want to push him back. We'll call you when it's ready. That right there already told me they want to double check something because stuff ain't coming back right, right? So fast forward to February 28th, um, 20 days later, they give me the call like, yep, you can come in. We're ready to talk to you about your results. So I walk in. The faces on everybody, even though everybody's trying to be happy, I can read the energy in a room. I walk in and these ladies are kind of looking concerned. Um, they, they're happy, trying to be friendly, but they're concerned, right? So I go in, I sit down with the RM, go to our, you know, our back room, and we have like a counseling session. And she hands me this folder and she opens it up and she tells me that I am BRCA1 positive. Now, instantly I'm just, like, if I wasn't this melanated, beautiful queen, uh, you probably would be like, damn, she's pale, she's about to pass out. Like, I couldn't believe it. Like, I was just in shock. Maybe it's my ego, but I'm a very strong person, but I had a whole breakdown because of everything we were going through in our family um, and all the individuals we were losing and those who we had lost as well. And so I told her that I'm fine um, and I said immediately, I want to have a um, double mastectomy. So she's like, okay, I'm going to 
send you over to this, you know, fill out this paperwork. They're gonna give you a call and then she's gonna take care of your double mastectomy. But also, um, you're not just high risk for uh, breast cancer because BRCA1 is high risk for breast cancer, um, but you're also high risk for ovarian cancer. And I just, just take a whole step back and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Nobody in my family has ovarian cancer, from my knowledge, right? And so she's like, um, what, what do you want to do? Like, what's your next step for that? Because you have options. And I was like, I think I want to remove everything. Everything. So we talked about the options and um, I decided that I wanted to remove everything. But if you're somebody who don't want to remove everything, there are options. And I'm going to talk to you guys more in detail about that in the next videos. So if you guys are interested in the options portion of this, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for next week's drop of all about my bracket one in the options that you can do and that you can take for yours as well. Take me on a trip by